micro LED TVs, the unicorn of displays. Remember when analysts, pundits, and commentators were saying, hey, not until 2026 will we have mass commercialization of micro LED TVs. Well, it looks like it'll be sooner. How about 2023? Let's pop open the champagne and check out what it's all about. So all signs point to 2023 when we'll start seeing more affordable micro LED TVs. Today, micro LED TVs from Sony and Samsung are insanely expensive. We're talking over six figures. The wall or Sony's crystal display, right? These things are incredibly beautiful, incredibly expensive. And a little bit of background, why micro LED is first, why is it so awesome? And then why is it so expensive? It's awesome because imagine OLED quality picture and all the benefits of OLED without burn-in. No organic materials and it's brighter. Wait, so what were the weaknesses of OLED? Burn-in, shorter life, and it doesn't get as bright. Marco LED, no burn-in, much longer life, and it gets significantly brighter. As a matter of fact, it may be the one getting us to 4,000 nits because it's a self-emitting light layer right in front. doesn't go through a bunch of layers. It is emitting light straight from the front. Okay, so it's awesome, right? Well, why is it so expensive? Well, micro LED, micro, tiny. It's so small that the level of manufacturing precision, accuracy, and yield is a problem. So the wall, you know, giant 75 inch TV, how many bad pixels do they have to get rid of to make that TV, right? So it's about yield. Once yield hits a certain level, let's say over 70%, consumers can start enjoying the prices that they see for OLED and LED. Like LED right now, yields are over 90%, right? OLEDs, similar. But micro LEDs, the yields are pretty terrible because of the precision required to get all those multicolored micro LEDs in the right place. And just manufacturing the micro LEDs is difficult. So there's a lot of obstacles. Manufacturing the micro LEDs and then placing them in an array and then matching them all together and then getting them onto a larger TV. And we're talking 8K. So it's not just 4K. 8K TVs, even tinier pixels, right? Because obviously by 2023, 2024, 8K will be a thing. It's still early now. So if there was a micro LED TV available today, 4K is fine, but these guys know that in the future, five years from now, they're going to have to work on making sure it's 8K because otherwise they'll be competing against 8K LCDs and OLED. And at that point, micro LED won't make as much sense, right? So 8K precision for tiny, tiny little LEDs. Now, why? Suddenly, it's 2023, three years earlier than 2026. This is why, and I think this is pretty crazy awesome. A little history about this whole display market and display industry. The Chinese and the Taiwanese recently got into the display game. As a matter of fact, we see them as, oh, cheap LCDs from China, right? Before there was such a thing as cheap LCDs from China, Korea was the one dominating the LCD market. As a matter of fact, they were the ones that led and spearheaded the destruction of plasma TV. 
the Koreans did such a great job, LG and Samsung, of LCD technology that it single-handedly pushed plasma out of the way. Even though we all recognize the awesomeness of plasma, it never got a chance to fully develop how much more awesome it could be because the Koreans made a good enough LCD TV that was much cheaper and that pretty much changed everything. And so they dominated LCD for a while and China and Taiwan were a bit late to that party. So they got caught up LCD, but by the time they got there, it's now a commodity where no one makes money. As a matter of fact, it is so plentiful and so cheaply made that, well, frankly, there's barely any money in LCD, right? And so the Taiwanese and the Chinese manufacturers got there late to the game, overproduced, and no one made any money. The Koreans made a lot of money in LCDs for years. Only until recently with the arrival of OLED, thank you LG, did LCDs become yesterday's news, right? So today we are in the midst of OLED dominance, I would say, because as you saw in both my roadmap and my reviews, the best technology you have right now for the next few years is OLED. Yes, it has its weaknesses, but I'm just talking picture quality. It doesn't get better than OLED and not until you get to quantum dots as a color conversion filter, right? That is still far ways off. There are some issues with getting it to production because bringing quantum dots to the front, right next to the light source, whether it's micro LED or OLED, is a problem because of the heat generated and it destabilizes the quantum dots as a color conversion filter. So they're still overcoming that part of it. That's why you don't see QD OLED from Samsung. Samsung's next generation OLED was to be this quantum dot color conversion filter here, blue OLEDs here, beautiful music, superior to LG. So the Taiwanese and the Chinese companies missed the early boat on LCD. They never got a chance to really get it on the ground floor. They got in when the floor was already built out, right? <laughs> at the very top of the roof, and then they jumped. OLED, similarly, LG has already built it out. LG dominates the market, and for them to get caught up on OLED, I mean, they could start making it, which they are, and we're seeing them start factories, but this is not the ground floor. The ground floor is micro LED. Why do we think it's suddenly 2023, not 2026. So now we have a perfect storm of a few things. First, there's a whole lot of money floating around up there. So at a macroeconomic level, you have a lot of institutional money looking for something to invest in. And we're not just talking about the US. Globally, they're looking for investment opportunities. Everybody who missed the OLED or the LCD craze can now invest their money in the micro LED craze. Okay, so you have money. Secondly, you have a lot of players, a lot of competition in micro LED. What I did not realize until I started researching this matter is in the course of the last year and even the last few months and weeks, maybe even days, we're getting a merger of competitors becoming partners in the supply chain to make micro LEDs. This is a lot of money all focused into one technology to solve one problem. And the problem they're solving is exactly what humans do best. This is an easier problem to solve for micro LED than for, sadly enough, Samsung's QD OLED. Micro LED, we know how to make it. We know the chemistry, we know the raw materials, everything is done. What we're missing is production, yield, and tiny, tiny, tiny manufacturing tools. This is exactly what human beings do best. They like to make things small 
and they like to improve production yield, right? Efficiency, productivity, a new way to make a mouse trap. Not a better mouse trap, just more mouse traps, smaller mouse traps. We do that really well. All this money is being focused on yields, precision, and production. That's an easier obstacle, or those are easier obstacles to overcome than OLED, QD OLED, because the obstacles here start with basic chemistry, <laughs> physics. The physics and chemistry is done. It's what is the most creative way to improve our yields, to get better production. And if you start pouring money into solving that problem, you'll get there a lot faster. There's nothing humans do better than solving manufacturing and efficiency obstacles. And that's all micro LED is. It is not an obstacle of physics where, hmm, this is physically impossible. Let's find a way around that. That's OLED. Micro LED is, how can we make more of these cheaper? So I've put the links below. And what you'll notice is lots of money, lots of partnerships. This is also unique. You saw recently that BOE got into the game. What did BOE do? It partnered with Rohini. But they weren't the only partnerships. We're seeing a lot of partnerships throughout Taiwan, China, Japan, US. That's a lot of money, a lot of partnerships, all focused on the one obstacle that we do really well in solving, manufacturing. And that being the case, QD OLED has a problem. Why is that? So let's talk about OLED's next generation solutions. The reason why OLED has a limit to its development is it's an organic material that's very unstable and specifically blue emitters are a problem. Neither LG nor anybody else in the world up to this point has been able to create the perfect blue emitter that's stable, long lasting, no burn in, in other words, right? These are all relate, burn in and stability are all related. And it's specifically the blue that's a problem. LG found a way around it. It uses less blue, uses color filters, and that's why it has a certain color bias that's unique to OLEDs, but it's still good. Micro LED does not have those issues. OLED cannot move forward unless it overcomes that blue emitter issue. And it cannot find the right chemical makeup to overcome it. There have been many proposals for solutions and none of them have worked out because either they don't last long enough, you know, stability is an issue still, or the science isn't there to even manufacture it. So this blue emitter limits any further development in OLED. And that directly affects Samsung's QD OLED plans. QD OLED has always assumed that somebody would have solved the blue emitter problem. No one has. Now, Samsung could get around that by not using OLED. They could use QD, micro LED, right? But let's talk about that later because that's a different problem. The OLED issue itself is on a dead end right now. All LG can do is go to inkjet printing to save money in production, right? So this is a production solution. It doesn't help with a better blue, but it helps you create more OLED panels cheaply, less waste. The blue, I don't believe, will ever be solved, and this is why. If it takes five years to solve the blue emitter problem and micro LED becomes the thing in five years, this is a moot point. Solving it gets you nowhere because why not just use a micro LED blue? And thus the problem. And maybe that's why there's not enough research money into solving the blue OLED problem.
it's a moot point in four years once micro LED is figured out. And it will be figured out because it's a manufacturing yield problem. The OLED issue is a short-term issue that's a band-aid for a short-term technology, OLED. I suspect Samsung knows this. And Samsung is purposefully delaying its QD OLED investment. Remember that? That big announcement, we are going to get into QD OLED, next generation, and this is it. Well, we questioned the wisdom of that, remember? QD OLED, dude, OLED is like this year's technology, but by the time you're done figuring out this whole blue OLED thing, why not just get into micro LED and $10 billion to figure that out? What a waste of money. It looks like Samsung is coming to its senses. Now, they haven't announced anything. I'm just reading the tea leaves here. But for a company that announced with great fanfare their $11 billion investment, and then suddenly delaying committing any money into its production, remember, they announced 2021 as QD OLED production. If you want to get out there in 2021, shouldn't you start buying equipment now? They haven't bought any equipment. Suppliers who, are, who were supposed to supply them with the manufacturing equipment necessary to do QD OLED have been secretly, or maybe not so secretly, complaining all the orders that we lined up for Samsung, not happening. They're telling us to wait. Now, Samsung has an excuse. Their excuse is, oh, you know, we're in the midst of personnel changes, so we're going to delay this. That's BS. Seriously, come on. Any, anyone who's been in the business world can read between the lines. <laughs> there is no excuse. You either have your design and your QD OLED ready to go, or you don't. If you don't know how, if you don't have a clue how to make a QD OLED panel, you can't invest in any supplier. And if right now all they're doing is still R&D for QD OLED, why waste your time? Okay, that's one red flag is the delay. The second one, and this is the one that really interests me. So we all know Samsung is the first out the door with a micro LED TV, the wall. Do you know that its manufacturing partner, right, the company that provides the micro LED display is a company called Play Nitride, a Taiwanese company. And Play Nitride has invested in a company called Epistar to mass produce more of the raw micro LED wafers for mass production. So Epistar has partnered with another company in the supply side to create as many of these micro LED wafers as possible so that Play Nitride can create these displays for Samsung. Play Nitride is not the only investor in Epistar. The other investor, Samsung. So let's think about this. Samsung has $10 billion. They already have a micro LED TV out there. They are an investor in the company providing the raw wafers to make micro LED TVs. And Epistar was the one that announced will be ready for mass production in 2023. That means Samsung has an inside track into projecting, huh, 2023, maybe that's accurate. Because look at Samsung's point of view with QD OLED. If we spend the next two years figuring out QD OLED, by the end of 2022, we'll be ready for production. But a year later, micro LED comes to the table with an 8K micro LED. <laughs> that was $10 billion wasted. But if they can get on the ground floor with micro LED now, accelerate its mass production, and they're already investors in Epistar, it's a win-win situation for Samsung. And that's why I believe 2023 is a target date. Not only with the Epistar, Samsung, Play Nitride investment, but you have at least three other groups joining forces and every one of them well-funded. 
by either the Chinese government or a company like BOE, which has the resources of the Chinese government indirectly. So you have three groups, billions of dollars pouring into one problem, yields and manufacturing. So let's take all this information, wrap it up. What does it mean to the consumer? By the end of 2023, you should be able to buy a micro LED TV at a Best Buy. That's my call. What do you guys think? Off my rocker? Until next year, have a happy new year, everyone.